It's a very special occasion. <laughs> Hi, Pete. Right. We can get all our birds' mouths cut, get our notch timbers cut to sit into our wall plate steels, which will be across there. It's May and uh, absolute downpours. Love the British weather. It's Tuesday. It was bank holiday yesterday. Just trying to check that you're awake, because I'm not. Right, so what we've done is we have worked out the height that we need our internal block work to be to basically take our pad stones, our steels, etc. So we need to be 550 mil above where we are now, which is effectively two and a half blocks higher than this. That will basically be our pad stone height and our wall plate height all the way around. There's not actually going to be a wall plate on here. Uh, it will just be our joists that run straight on top of these white on blocks using some of our three mil roofing felt as well as the manufacturer recommends. That just sits underneath the joist and then the joist sits straight on top of that. So what we're going to do, Joe is going to use our petrol saw over there and he's basically going to cut loads of slips and we're going to get a slip on top of this course all the way around and then two four blocks on top of that another thing we are going to run another pipe in here so originally we were going to have a gully on this side so i have if you remember left the pipe in around there somewhere because we've got two velix windows up on the top there's going to be a lot of intricate falls so just to make our life easier we're going to have a downpipe here with a gully here and we're also going to have a downpipe in that corner with another gully there so this will all connect in and go out to our silt truck there and then into our soakway which is over there somewhere hopefully we'll get around that today I have been left with the awesome job of cutting down some of these blocks into smaller 90 mil blocks. It took me a couple of minutes to get the hose out and bits and bobs, but I've got the saw all set up, brought around about 40 blocks. I think I'll get something like six cuts out of each one. When you're using this, put your safety goggles, your ear protection. I know these don't look like ear protection. They're Bose headphones. Uh, they are completely noise canceling headphones. So to be honest, I've tested them and they do the trick. So Joe has been very busy, cut all of these slips. Those slips now will sit on top of this course all the way around, like I mentioned earlier. So that is one job done. Our timber is getting dropped off basically for all our rafters. So while the block work is going up still, I'm gonna get everything cut and ready because we know exactly how our timber is gonna sit in here. We know what angle our timber is gonna be at to get into our ridge steel. So we can get all our bird's mouths cut, get our notch timbers cut to sit into our wall plate steels, which will be across there, down that way and down that way. So we can get all those cut. So I've just made this little platform area here. So we've got a bit of storage underneath. All our timbers can go on top there. We've got a cutting station here. Alex is cracking on with the brickwork. Once this is all tidied, we'll then start getting all loaded out in there for Alex, get him some spot boards set up, get all the blocks up there for him, where he needs them, so we're not holding him up at all. And then tomorrow, like I say, timbers all arrive, so we can smash all the cuts out and everything. So yeah, hectic day, but we love it. it keeps us going, doesn't it? Right then guys, that is that. And just in time for the sun to come out as well for us. Anyway, today has been a tremendous effort as usual. Alex has got the block work up nicely there. These are what I was cutting earlier, just to get us up to the right height, running them the whole way around. Another block on the top. I think it's got one more block to go on to bring it up to full height after that. So Alex has done a brilliant job getting us where we need to be there. Everything's cleaned down. Bricks all's cleaned down. This thing, amazing bit of kit really annoying to clean no matter how many times you clean it down even if you let it dry brush it off it still has the white marks on so i'm gonna it's nice and clean but i'm gonna give that another go over tomorrow anyway enough of me boring you about cleaning equipment have a good night guys or a good day whatever time it is when this is released and yeah we'll see you soon so it's been a pretty hectic couple of days so i haven't done much filming to be honest i've been here there and everywhere so basically today alex is going to continue with our block work we're gonna get these steels in We've got a couple more steels to pick up as well today. 
which are going in over there. So they'll basically span across. There's going to be a doorway here, just with some double opening doors. Uh, and then the steels will go across the top because obviously we need to support the brickwork, which is above because we've got a big steel going in up there as well, uh, which is going to be effectively this ridge steel across here. So we need to obviously make sure this is structurally safe. So there's going to be two steels going in there, one for the inner and one for the outer leaf of the wall. We've got pad stones to go in over there as well. There's a column to be built up where that door is currently. So we're going to have to take a section of that out for now, board it up, ready for next to get the block work up in there. Also yesterday, last thing we got in our timber. So this under here is all our timber that we need for the roof. We've got some six meter lengths of timber, which I'm going to cut down in half for three meters because they're going to do either side there for the flat roofs. And then we've got some 3.6 meter timbers here, which will be our rafters for our pitch roof. I'm going to start by making a template. Our rafters are going to sit in this webbing here. So we've had an additional plate welded on the bottom just to give us a bit of extra bearing. That gives us about 100 mil, so about four inches there of bearing of the timbers. And the timbers are going to sit into the webbing of the steel. So what I'm going to do is make a ply template which will give me this exact profile here. We're going to stick our timber slightly below here and it will come slightly above here as well. We'll have a wall plate bolted on top because that will carry then our, our rafters going up on our pitch roof and so make a start on getting these cut. So as soon as these steels go in, we can plot these straight in then and then that's our flat roof sorted. So hopefully the rain stops soon. Don't want to get my tools wet because as I'm sure you're aware, there's nothing more annoying than getting soaking wet tools. Very special occasion. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? Hi, Pete. Right. Hey, You're supposed to go. Hi, John. No, no. You passed that now. Yeah, I'm trying to be a bit more enthusiastic. So Pete has graced us with his presence today. He is doing a sterling job as ever. So Alex is just getting our pad stones in now. So we have one pad stone here, which will carry our little stub, and then we've got pad stone over here, which you can see is effectively an owl-shaped pad stone. So the reason for this is we've got an additional flange which has been welded onto the bottom of our steel. So the extra bit of pad stone there will catch that and stop it cantering over. And then we've got the additional length on the back because we have made these slightly over length just to give us a little bit of wiggle room should we need it. So everything will be nicely supported there with the pad stones. Same over on this side because we've got exactly the same. We've got steel coming across here and the stub going up there. So we've got exactly the same. But Alex has started to brick this one in so you can see how that's going to look. Pete is now just going to get all these slips. So we've got our slips here. Pete's going to cut the same now in our concrete blocks, because that will obviously need to marry round for the ties and for the insulation. So we need to put that course in externally as well as internally. I am starting to get the timbers cut to sit in the steel. We've got a lot of rafters going in, so I'm just anticipating this and making a start while I can. So we've made myself a little jig, which is here. So I've made this from the profile of the steel, basically just a bit of ply some guides on the back and then what will happen is that just sits on like that screw it into place and then I just use my router trim round here around this edge as deep as I can go trim the excess off with my jigsaw and then flip it over and then I've got a, a trimmer bit which is in my router there so the bearing will sit against what I've already cut out neatly with my other router bit and that'll give me a nice finish then all the way around and then it sits in nice and snug in there in the webbing of the steel it sits across the webbing as well so yeah, that's it. So we've got here a brand new Baco Superior saw. These are awesome. It looks really nice. Let's see how wide it cuts. Nice. Well, it's a 22 inch saw, nine teeth per inch. So it's just a medium saw, cutting general wood. It's got a nice uh, fish embossed in it as well on the side. Look at it. It's wow nice. I'm going to have to get me one of those. That just unclips and you can just pop all of the other blades in. New blades into just, it. Just like that. Just like that. That's the technique. That's <laughs>
course I'm here is use my jig and my router. I've gone done a few passes. Uh, just this basically gives me the profile I need then to get within the webbing of the steel here and here. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop this jig off and I'm going to use my jigsaw just to roughly cut this out. And then I'm going to flip over. Well, I'm doing a load of them first. I'm going to get all these ones cut. And then I'll flip it over, change my router bit over to a trimmer bit, which is here. And then I'll come from the other side then. And then I'll trim the excess out all the way around. And that'll give me a nice finish all the way in here to get these into the webbing. See now I've got this excess on here, so when I now use my trim a bit, that will go on here. The bearing then will sit on the existing, just here like this, and then trim the rest off to this profile, so it'll be the same all the way through. The reason I'm doing this rather than hand cutting it with the saw is it's just a lot quicker to whack a load out this way with my template. Easier, nice. I can nicely get all the radiuses as well that way. So that is why I'm doing it this way. We go nice and neat and i know now that's going to sit perfectly in there so i've just got to repeat this process a lot of times we've got plenty done today alex has as always absolutely smashed it we're now up to the level we need to be internally so all this block work that is going to be ceiling height effectively inside all our pad stones are in we've obviously still got to get our pad stones into the existing building but the new pad stones are in here we've got a load of timbers cut for the webbings of the steel so that is all good pete's got everything loaded out as well so we've got a load of blocks around here ready for the external block work so that is it for another day i will see you in the morning hi joe hello so, so this week you what you she just said, hi, joe. I just <laughs> <laughs> no i missed that <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this week we have got a very busy week ahead of us as always you know us we like to stay busy alex is gonna carry on out here he's gonna get all this block work up externally he's got himself a nice little trestle set up down here because it is very tight down there so we've had to do a bit of magic just to give him a nice sturdy platform to work off so he's gonna start around here get the rest of these blocks up to here and round here we're actually going to leave a corner out here on this corner because if you can see just up there we've got a little tile crease detail which is going to be replicated on the corner of the extension on this corner and on the corner over the other side as well so we're just going to leave these two blocks out here so we can get all that sorted out afterwards just enables them to carry on with all this block work we've got a lintel to go in across here as well well obviously this is going to be a window so we need a lintel across the top of that to carry the block work all right out and he will continue across here there's no lintels to go in in this opening here because obviously we've got our steels coming up so our steels will just sit on our pad stones a lintel to go in across here across this window as well and then like i just said there's a, another tile crease detail to match in that which will go here we're also going to get these sorted out so what we're going to be doing is this is going to be a double door and this will be a double door as well but these are going to be we believe at the minute are going to be sliding doors still in a bit of discussion with the client uh, as to what we're going to do because they don't want an opening door to open onto this because it's at a bit of an angle you're not going to be able to open the door all the way so a sliding door here may be an option but what we do need to do is build a pillar up here because that's going to carry this steel which will sit on this pad stone here and run across so we need to make sure we've got a pad stone in there uh, we may also need to put some lintels in across here as well once we start exposing this we'll see what's in there but i believe there that there actually isn't any lintels in there uh, so we may have to put a lintel or a steel across there yet so that's to be decided but what we're going to do is we're going to take this section out here we're going to leave that door in just so the clients get a bit of light through into the room we'll just basically take this out do a box in behind so we keep the clients safe and the elements out here and then alex can get this column built up and then get the pad stone in and get the steel in i've started exposing some of the render so we worked out these are all our workings out on the wall so our pad stone is going to sit here so it will span across to there center of the steel is in the middle of that we can get this pocket sorted as well ready so the pad stone can go in and then the steel can drop straight in as well 
we're gonna have to do the same up there but we are actually having a scaffold which is going to be built internally so it will just enable us to have a nice safe working platform because we have got a very big and heavy steel to get up which is going to be this ridge steel so we're going to get our beam lifts lift the steel up onto the scaffold which is going to be sat at this height so it'll run just about this height at the top of that door and then we can get our beam lift on top of that then and then lift our steel up again to sit because our steel is actually going to sit about here i believe somewhere in the rounds of there steady platform that will enable us then to lift it up safely because the last thing we want to do as well because we've got to sort of clamp it in between these two rafter steels here we don't want to be messing around trying to handball it up because it's going to be very dangerous we can then just work very easily on this area which is which is very important really because we don't want to be dropping this because it's it's what heavy it weighs about 250 kilos i think so enough talking more working let's set some time lapses and you can watch us cracking on We're just basically getting everything cut now. We've been inside, we've measured up exactly what bits of timbers we need to make our little boxing in section. So we're gonna crack on with that now, get this ply cut down, get some timber cut down, and we can go inside, get it all set up nicely uh, so the clients are nice and safe, and then we can start knocking stuff about. So let's start cutting. Our boxing in has been done. It's in there, I don't know if you can see. We've fully boxed it off from the rest of the house. So this now, we can take this frame out here and we'll be able to obviously minimize any dust that goes through into the property. Joe's just in there now taping it all up. So any joints where the timber meets the walls, that's all sealed in nicely. So I wanna go ahead now and get this out. So I'm just basically gonna cut this frame out internally here and leave this frame in for now. I'm waiting to get through to the structural engineer to see if we need to put lintels in uh, and then I'm gonna get some strong boys in up here, hold this, because I'm pretty sure there's no lintel above this at all. It's just literally the frame holding it in, because it's quite a chunky frame. Once the strong boys are in, we can then take the rest of the frame out. So let's get on with it. Let's see Joe's hair in action. Yes! <laughs> That's one for the ladies. Often, man. <laughs> Whoever wants me. Whoever wants me. That sounded pretty desperate, mate. So, the hole is done. You've just seen me cutting around the perimeter. So, our frame is here, but this frame that this was actually sat in was recessed into it. So, I've just trimmed round just to get this out because, like I mentioned, this frame is effectively holding up the brickwork for now. So, we're going to get some strong boys in now. Just get them in up there, a couple of those in, and then we can remove the rest of this frame, take that out completely, and then we are good to go. We are going to be leaving this one in uh, because obviously the door is fixed to that, and we need to keep the door in for now for the clients just to let a bit of light through into the room. So it'll just be this side, this top section, and then obviously this side, of course, will come out as well. Let's crack on. So it's May and uh, this is what we're having to contend with. Absolute downpours. Good job, we got the Tony tent up. Tony tent is the one. <laughs> yes, you definitely come dressed for the occasion, mate. Love the British weather.
Right, so we've got our hole now, our strong boys in up there, and I've just taken the frame out. So you can see from here that there is no lintel at all holding this external skin up. We've got a timber lintel in there, that's nice and solid. It's not degraded whatsoever, basically. It's still a good bit of timber in there, so we should be able to leave that in no problems whatsoever. I have spoken to the structural engineer, and he recommends just using an L-shaped lintel across here. Uh, there's not a massive load of weight on there, so we'll be completely fine to put an L-shape in there. We'll put a decent size one in, a nice chunky one, so it will carry this load. We're only going to span across, I think it's 1600 this opening is going to be, so an L-shape would do perfect in there. And the inner leaf is held up obviously by this timber lintel, so we've got no problems whatsoever. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to take these bricks out here, these few soldiers there, and then this course as well. Just up to this point here basically uh, and then this is all ready then for Alex to start building this up. We can get the pad stone in, get our L shape in and get the steel on. So today as usual we've got a busy day. It's meant to chuck it down with rain again which is going to be nice. We got wet yesterday didn't we Joe? Oh yes. Luckily we had our uh, trusty tent up in here so we've got to get pockets out ready for pad stones so there's a pocket to be made in here and also what we've got to do is finish this off up here and basically get some more strong boys in here and knock the rest of this brickwork out ready for a lintel to go in across there So we've got all this out, ready for the lintel and ready for our pier, pier to be built. Pierre? Pierre! 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 <laughs> ready for our column, pillar, pier, whatever you would like to call it, to be built up here to take the pad stone and to take our lintel. You can see that we've put a bit of timber in across here as well and just clamp that onto the strong boys. All that does, obviously this wall is fully supported with these acros here, but there are going to be, naturally, unless you put one under every brick, there are going to be bricks that are basically just floating. So what we've done is put this piece of timber underneath, so if any bricks do come loose, everybody is safe beneath, because all it will do is just basically camber back and hit the wall, and that'll be it, it won't drop out. What we're going to do now is get this area here sorted, ready for the block work to go on, get our wall starter kits on up here, and then by that time, Alex will be ready to drop straight onto this and start blocking it up. We're going to use uh, some bricks on the bottom with a damp course, with some damp proof membrane just beneath it, and then we're going to use seven newton blocks flat all the way up here to the height we need it to be for the pad stone and then it'll be a little bit more for this lintel across here as well so let's crack on So, Alex has done a wicked job and he's got this pillar built right up here now. So that pad stone there will hold our steel that runs across to there. And then our lintel, which is here. That lintel will run straight the way across here. The reason we put it, I'm not sure if I've told you already, but the reason that we've put it higher than the existing door is because the clients are gonna have some sliding doors here. And we're unsure yet as to what mechanism will be above that. So there's going to be some sort of rail that will be above the doors. So we've done it this high. So it just gives us enough clearance so we can get any sort of track in there that we need to. Because we can always build down off the lintel, but it's obviously not very easy to go up if we needed to. I've also just collected the cavity closers. We're going to get the cavity closers in because this insulation doesn't like getting wet. So we need to make sure this is fully protected. Obviously we're protected across the top but you are going to get a small amount that's going to hit the side surface of these. So we're going to get all these cavity closes on now. Joe's going to crack on with that. I've also gone and got the timber, which is going to act as a wall plate on top of our steels. It's going to be bolted on. We've got the holes pre-drilled in the steels in anticipation for, for this. So what I've had to do is get some six inch timber. It's basically slightly wider than the steel. So I'm just going to trim that down to suit and then I can get that all machined up and then get that bolted on when the steels are in situ up there. That's just another job off the tick list. So yeah, let's carry on. Little update for you.
you just see me as well getting all the timbers cut which will be our rafters for our flat roofs so that's the remainder in there i will probably have a couple more to fit um, because obviously the extension's at a bit of an angle to the existing building i wasn't sure what we were going to do with that at the minute so i've just got everything sort of ready as far as i need to i know i need this many for for sure so i've got them done there are more to do afterwards though alex is just about to get the pad stone in here which will carry this steel uh, so i'm off on another job tomorrow but alex will still be here he'll carry on with the block work outside and then on friday when i come back today's wednesday we're going to get these steels in then we can drop this steel in and drop the steel in over there and then we can start chucking the rafters in and getting a roof on yes it hasn't rained today has it it's rained a little bit we've done good yeah Every so, time you've got the camera, I fall over. Yeah, but I haven't got the camera pointing at you when you fall over. This is the trouble. You just hear the noise. I will catch Jay falling over one day.